Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome back to a brand new Life After Navy episode. And today's episode, guys, marks a very special occasion for me. Yes, because it is my seven-year anniversary from when I first shipped off to Navy Boot Camp. Or Navy Basic, as some branches like to remind me. In any event, seven years, guys, to when my life changed forever. And... I remember that day very vividly. My folks were nervous, I was nervous. I think honestly they were a bit more nervous than me because they didn't really have any accurate uh, source of what to expect from the current or then current uh, Navy because all the stories and stuff that they've heard were from Cold War era Navy and like Full Metal Jacket and stuff like that, which that's Marines. And being a very shy, very introverted kid getting thrown into basically extrovert heaven uh, was a very very daunting task for me the first half of boot camp was pretty rough you know as they as the RDC say they break you down only to build you back up and honestly you know looking back on it it wasn't really that bad when I was first getting acclimated for like the first couple of weeks or so it was you know it was pretty rough I mean it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be but it was, <laughs> that's not to say it was easy. And you know, as, as the weeks progressed and we got into the second month, it started to get a little easier. We started to become more acclimated to the schedule and things just got better from there. And one of the, the main things that plagued me during my entire time in the Navy was my weight. I remember my goal uh, when I was joining boot camp was to not get taped for the final PFA because I was always just a little bit overweight from my height, so my goal was to not get taped because when I first joined boot camp, I was 193 pounds, and for my height, I had to be 191 or under, so I was, I was like right there, man. I was only two pounds off. Like, I've taken bigger shits than that. Come on. So my goal was to just get fit, and I was hella disciplined, guys. You know, I was a lot more disciplined then than I am now. I mean, I stuck with drinking no sodas, no nothing, just water and bare minimum, no desserts except except for on Sundays. I would have one dessert. And uh, there was one time in boot camp. I know, this one time in boot camp? Uh, but there was this one time in boot camp where uh, we just got back from church on Sunday and uh, there was a couple of us from, from my division. We went to go at the mess decks to go eat and uh, the division next to us where we were eating uh, apparently had a lot of PFA failures. So their RDCs were hot on them, boy. And uh, they were like, no desserts, because there would, there'd be this nice little old lady who would walk around, you know, the little uh, rows of tables and stuff and ask if anybody wanted desserts. And all the RDCs were like, you fat bodies don't deserve no desserts. Don't even look at it. Don't even smell it. And <laughs> we were like, uh, we're not with them, ma'am. Uh, bring those chocolate snicker bars over here. <laughs> So, we, so it was like me and like two or three other guys from my uh, boot camp division were just sitting there eating like snicker bars and all these other ice cream bars while the other division, like we could feel, they weren't like actually glaring at us, but we could feel the glare. It was so fucking bad. But I'm just sitting there like, I don't give a fuck, whatever. The final PFA comes and uh, I, we go in for the weigh-ins and stuff and I'm pissed because... I weigh 195 now. So I'm like, what the fuck? I, you know, despite, I only eat dessert on Sundays and it's only one fucking chocolate bar. <laughs> like, it's, I'm not fucking hoarding out at McDonald's or nothing like that. One fucking chocolate bar and real fucking discipline. I run my ass off, I work my ass off and I gain two pounds. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I have to go in for the fucking rope and choke and feel like such a fat little dingle dong. They measured my waist, neck, all that stuff. And they actually looked at the thing and they're like, wow, you actually like lost a lot of body fat. And I'm like, well, if I did, then why do I, why have I gained two pounds? Is it just in muscle or what? And they're like, yeah, basically. Over the course of boot camp, even though I gained two pounds, I lost like nearly 10% body fat. Which is pretty fucking good in two months, I'd say. So I was feeling pretty good. I was still kind of kind of pissed that, you know, I didn't meet my goal of not getting fucking taped for the PFA. But uh, past it, uh, probably, probably the best PFA time I've ever done in my entire career. Moved on to Bigger Better Things. Went across the street to ATT, 
Uh, it's apprentice technical training. It's like a basic electronics course uh, for a couple months. Then I shipped all the way out to sunny San Diego to learn all the things about sonar. And I uh, went through A school, C school, ops classes, all that stuff. Then from there, got orders out to USS Kurtz, FFG 38, 38 Special, uh, Special, <laughs> uh, who was at the time uh, out in San Diego. So I didn't have to go very far. I just put all my shit in storage and went out to deployment. And then after that, uh, actually during that time, because the Kurtz was decomming, we were all set to pick orders. And I told my LPO, my chief, everybody that I wanted to go out to Japan. And they were like totally on board with it. But because I was a 56 tech, which is a tech for, it was a hull tech for uh, the 56 sonar system, which is exclusive to frigates, since there were no frigates out in Japan at that time, uh, they would have to send me back to school to learn the new sonar system. And because I had just graduated from school, and didn't have like a whole bunch of years of fleet experience under my belt. They were kind of worried that maybe Big Navy wouldn't send me out to that school because they were like, well, this kid just graduated, put him on another frigate. And uh, I was really worried about that because I really wanted to go out to Japan because that was my dream and I pushed it as hard as I could with my chain of command. They're like, all right, hell yeah, we're, now we're, we're behind you 100%, man. And it also helped that my, uh, my LPO in chief were uh, former 7th Fleet sailors. So they're like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Have a two eye for us too. So it eventually came down time to uh, to talk to the detailer, and turns out uh, there were no orders available for 56 techs. They're like, shit, what do we do? So I I asked them, you know, hey, can you send me back to school to learn the the new sonar system? Maybe 15 at the time. They were like, yeah, man. I mean, we have to send you somewhere. You know, it's not like, you know, well, you just have to be up for orders, and if we don't have any orders, we'll just stick you on Kurtz because Kurtz wasn't going to be around for much longer. So they had to send me somewhere. And they gave me orders to school to learn the new sonar system for a couple months. And then from there, transferred me out to USS Lassen DDG-82, which was, at the time, stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan. They have since moved back stateside to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Mayport. Went out there, served my last two years in the Navy. I had a lot of good times out there. I um, was really glad to have spent all that time in Japan that I'd have. And uh, I've met, made a lot of friends out there had just the best time because I managed to get in contact with a lot of YouTubers that um, even though I was an adult watching YouTube, I felt like in a way I kind of grew up with them, you know, watching their videos and seeing their experiences in Japan. And I'm just like, I want to make those types of videos, but I was in the Navy, so I made different types of videos than them, you know, going to Japan, looking at vending machines and trying out weird hamburgers and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a little different, but kind of in the same same vein, the same heart of uh, video making. And to actually get to meet them and collab with a couple of them was a very, very good experience for me. But despite all the good, uh, there was also a lot of bad experiences out there. Not really so much in Japan or with other YouTubers or any other stuff. Uh, it was mostly just Navy related, so uh, being hot and heavy in 7th Fleet uh, really does take a toll on some people and there's uh, certain types of people that really enjoy that sort of thrill of the hunt and thrill of, you know, getting back out to sea at a moment's notice and, you know, getting to put, you know, boots to asses when it comes to stuff like that. But there's also, you know, people like me who, I mean, I like going out to other ports and doing my thing, but I wasn't like that passionately in love with what I did in the Navy. And, you know, going out to 7th Fleet, you have to be like all in with that sort of thing. At least that's how it was with my command. Maybe other commands are different, but uh, the command climate was definitely like super duper Joe Navy. I wasn't like, fuck the Navy, but I wasn't like super Joe Navy. I was just kind of like in the middle. I'll do a good job, but I'm not gonna be like super like Joe Navy, re-enlist, all this kind of crap. And they just kind of saw me as a shit bag because I wasn't like, super on board with what they were doing. You know, despite all that, I still kept my head held high and knew that the Navy wasn't for me long term. I'm okay with it, I'm at peace with it, um, but I am glad that I tried it. You know, I see a lot of comments from a lot of people who are thinking about joining the military, whether it's the Navy or another branch, you know, not just in my videos, but in other uh, military vlogging channels, videos, and that, that was not a thing when I first started this 
this whole YouTube journey. Um, one of the reasons why I started it was because there was no military vloggers of any branches. It wasn't just a Navy thing. It was just like military wide. There wasn't really any anyone doing it consistently. You get some guys that may post a video or two like once every eight months, but beyond that, there wasn't really anybody doing it, doing it consistently. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do it because I wanted to bring a more uh, modern take on what the like the real Navy is doing, what the modern Navy is doing, not just you know shit from the Cold War, or from Desert Storm, or any of that other stuff. I wanted to bring it into more modern times and project it into a more modern platform like YouTube. And even though, from a technical perspective, those videos weren't very good, um, I think that they, they still had a lot of heart. And if anything, it helped document and encapsulate that period of time in my life, you know, for better or worse. And I can go back and look at my entire Navy career uh, from start to finish, anytime I want for the, the rest of my life, and even beyond my life, you know, as long as. YouTube is still around and the servers are still around, you know, people can look at my videos, you know, indefinitely, you know, there's no time limit or anything. So even after, long after I'm gone, as long as the servers are still around, perpetuating that data, future prospective sailors will get to see that, even though the videos will be super duper old and like, ah, why is it not 3D? <laughs> Ah, that 1080p, so grainy. You know, I just felt like that was kind of my contribution to do. And now, with more people, more military vloggers, not just from the Navy, but from other branches. You know, you got Air Force with Kyle Gott. You got some Marines in there with Nav. You know, I mean, some people may like him. You know, he's kind of a, a mixed bag, but, you know, he's there. Um, and, of course, my boy JT Suits from the Navy. What a fam! You know, and I, I, I really have to uh, thank JT especially. And this isn't me just, you know, giving him a shout out or sucking up to him or whatever. I have to especially thank JT because um, when I started noticing his videos that he was doing when he got out of active duty, I was very burnt out with the Navy. And I'd gone through a lot of rough times and I was just in a very, very bad spot in my life. I was drinking every day, gaining a lot of weight, which eventually, you know, killed my Navy career. So it is what it is, but um, I was just in a bad spot and I just wanted to put the whole Navy thing behind me, go back to school and do something else, get back to Japan, but in a civilian role, not in a military role. So uh, then I started seeing some of JT's videos and it was just like, he reminded me a lot of that, of that kid, that nervous kid in 2010 who wanted to make a difference and who wanted to uh, spread the knowledge of what the modern day Navy is like, what the actual Navy is like, you know, warts and all. Talk about the good stuff about the Navy and some of the bad stuff about the Navy, but he's going to talk about it from both sides of the spectrum. So to give you a more even perspective on what the Navy does. And it just reminded me so much of that nervous kid back in 2010, seven years ago, who got on a plane from Columbus, Ohio, to Chicago O'Hare Airport, landed, didn't know what the fuck he was in for, and ended up coming out on the other end of it five years later, a U.S. Navy veteran, going back to school for the first time in over a decade. Even though he's had his setbacks since getting out, things are definitely looking up. I want to thank, thank JT especially for giving me back that, uh, that love for making Navy videos and for spreading knowledge about <laughs> knowledge about the US Navy, uh, both good and bad. And I know I've been kind of rambling a little bit in this video, but I promise we'll end it quick. But before we do, um, I do want to make a special announcement. I've decided to finally bite the bullet and make my own Navy dedicated channel because I know that there are some people who watch my my YouTube channel for certain types of content and when they don't get that certain type of content then they're less likely to tune in when that certain type of content is presented. So I feel in the interest of producing a consistent type of content, I want to have a channel specifically dedicated to it. Um, in the next coming weeks, we're going to be completely retooling one of my old channels. Uh, it was originally my NFAX channel, 
but we're going to be retooling it and it's going to be called Andy Talks Navy. We're going to be uploading a lot of the old Navy videos. We're going to be doing new Navy videos and we're going to be doing Navy videos exclusively to that channel. So you're not going to see any more Navy related content on this channel. This is going to be my personal channel. So it's going to involve uh, personal updates with me as well as other miscellaneous videos that I want to put out. So it's just going to be kind of a grab bag of stuff. All the Navy related content is going to be over on that channel. So I'll be sure to put a link down below in the boopity boops in the description as well as in the comments. A uh, link to that channel so you guys can subscribe. And over the next couple of weeks I'll be uploading stuff both new and old. It's not just going to be all re-uploads. But I do want to also have a lot of the older stuff as well because I still think that it holds some value as far as what information is presented in it. So, hope you guys look forward to uh, what's going to be coming out from the old Andy San Samadesha. But for now, this is Andy San signing off. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.